thanks very much, everybody. Uh, thank you, John, and thanks to Loyola for having me back. I was here a couple of years ago and uh, had a nice time talking with everybody who came to the show. Um, I'm using the mic for two reasons. One is, I guess they're recording it, and they're going to stream it, or whatever they're going to do. The other is that I'm actually hoarse, which is unusual for me, but so you're going to be spared any serious harangues, probably. Unless you really get me angry, and I'll just be screaming. But, um, but here's the deal. Um, over the years, <coughs> I've done probably thousands of interviews. And most interviews I've done are with, obviously, journalists or radio stations. Um, and the questions they ask, they're really kind of skewed to that particular perspective. They kind of represent the people who are reading uh, the magazines or listening to the radio station but they're actually not the questions that people might ask themselves because they're in the, the business themselves, they're in the industry. So they have a certain kind of predictable uh, meter, these, these uh, interviews. And at some point, I got to thinking about the idea of somebody invited me to come speak somewhere, and I said, well, I don't really have prepared more remarks. I don't have any kind of speech to give. Um, but if people are curious, and want to ask me questions, I'd be happy to do one giant interview with everybody who comes. So this is essentially a giant interview. For those of you who know nothing about what I do, then you can ask me what I do. And for those of you who know something about it, you can ask me some specifics if you want. We can talk about anything, or nothing at all. We can stand here and just stare at each other for an hour. Um, <laughs> and we can try that. It'll be boring on the internet, but. Uh, so the, somebody asked me a question, these are the mics, I guess. And don't be shy, because every moment being shy will be lost in terms of opportunity to talk. I don't know how long we're going to go, for an hour-ish? OK. So jump into it. Let's do it. You get it back. No. <laughs> you coming? OK. Well, I'm just letting it. Oh. <laughs> All right, go ahead. You can ask the question. Absolutely. I already lost the work started. Um, so I'm going to ask you one of the questions that, like, you probably got a lot. Why straight edge? <laughs> Can you be a little more specific about that? <laughs> okay, so, um, like, on the whole not drinking, not smoking, and all that, wh why, do you, why did you decide to start doing that? All right, let me, your for those of you who don't know, and I'm not going to be presumptuous, I think that everybody here knows exactly what he's talking about. And for those of you who do know, that you have to sit through this a little bit. In 1980, I was in a band called Minor Threat, and I wrote a song called Straight Edge. Now, this was a song that was about my decision in my life to not get high, to not drink, to not just sort of engage in really sort of conquest-oriented, like, sort of sex stuff, like just trying to get laid. And, like, I felt really removed from my community, like my community of high school kids, because I was in high school at that time. And growing up in high school, everybody got high. Everybody just partied. In fact, rebellion, if, there, if such a thing existed in high school, seemed to only exist, like that was the criteria of rebellion. That's why you rebelled against society, was to essentially self-destruct to some degree. And there was just something in my life that I was not interested in. When I first got into punk rock, which would have been early 1979, um, I felt like a true deviant because I did not get high. And the first punk show that I went to, I realized, well, these people are all deviants. They're all deviating from society to some degree. They're challenging all these conventional thinkings, these ideas about music and uh, fashion, obviously, and politics and sexuality, and I, felt, I felt really quite at home with these people because I felt like I was an alien in the larger society. Um, I think punk rock, for me, was always a collection of marginalized people, people who were trying to figure out, like, well, who am I? And then finally, well, here's some people who also don't know who they are, so let's be us. That'll be the us now. Um, what was interesting about being a kid who was not getting high, not sort of self-destructing and getting involved with punk rock was that the punk rockers really were like, they were like, they protected that. They were like, you're freaks, which was kind of cool. You actually, like, for a guy who's like a complete junkie, like who's like, you know, drinking 
vodka out of a mayonnaise jar. For him to call me a freak, I felt good. You know, I thought I, I was getting <laughs> But it wasn't like, uh, I have to say that it was never a, uh, it wasn't calculated. It wasn't, there was no precursor. I didn't know, I didn't, it, was, it was just like, that's just who I was. And, that's who, like, our friends, like, my friends, we just didn't party. We just wanted to go skateboarding or go see a movie or take a long walk. We just did stuff like that. So we got involved with punk rock. We're like, well, we just don't want to do that. We just want to play music. That's all we wanted to do was play music. And we wanted to go see our friends' bands play. Um, to the very beginning, the first song I wrote that kind of alluded to the, what became, like, the, sort of the straight-edge song uh, was a song called uh, I Drink Milk. And it's a, kind of, it's a silly song. It was just, you know, I drink milk, I drink milk, I drink milk, I drink milk. I don't care what people say. I drink milk for the vitamin A. I drink milk, I drink milk, I drink milk, I drink milk. I don't care what people say. I drink milk for the tooth decay. That was like, that's basically the song. But it was kind of like, that was, punk rock was goofy. And we were just like laughing. And what was incredible about this was that this goofiness, think about how silly those lyrics are, but it was met with such anger. Like, it was incredible that people like would just were like, you wouldn't even fascist, you know, like, what are you saying? We're just another kid, you know, we're just kids. And, and the, the conversation that got started by the fact that we did not participate in this sort of group nihilism thing, um, I never felt like we didn't go after them. We weren't like pointing people out and like, you're, you know, you're a drug addict, and you're a drinker, all this stuff. That, we were just ourselves, but they were more than happy to call us like Mormons or Korean freaks or whatever, you know, or, or pure-minded, insane people. Or, and what? Um, <laughs> but what what happened was that this conversation started to roll, and it started to get more heated. When I was in Minor Threat, I decided to write a song called Straight Edge. Now, part of the reason that this title came up was it was actually, there was a candidate for the name of the band. There was a new band. I had been playing the bass in the band of Teen Idols, I-D-L-E-S, Idols. And at that, the point that band broke up, I wanted to sing. I had written most of the lyrics for the band, and I wanted to sing. So Minor Threat, that next band was forming, and the drummer Jeff and I were talking about band names, and I said, what about Straight Edge? Because I love the idea of like, you know, Straight Edge Ruler, Straight Edge Razor, and then this idea that we were straight, and it was like this kind of concept. I wrote, and then we decided not to go to Straight Edge. And here's a, a tip for those of you who are in for band names. Don't pick a band name that starts with the letter S. Because if you ever worked at a record store, you have to look at the S's sorted section, you're not happy because there's a million bands that start with the letter S. So avoid it. That's my first useful tip. That's my maybe the only useful tip I'll have all night. But so we decided not to go with that. So instead we chose minor threat. But if you think about it, the name minor threat, again, we were playing with this whole celebration of being kids, teenagers, teen idols, minor threat. Um, and the song, I decided to use the name Straight Edge for a song, and I wrote those lyrics. Now this was a song about my life. It was about the way I looked at things and my decisions. And it was essentially inspired by a song by Jimi Hendrix, of all people, a song called If Six Were Nine. And in that song, he sang about being a freak. And he said, I'm the one who has to die when it's time for me to die. So let me live my life the way I want to. And those words, when I was a kid, hearing those words, it just blew my mind. So essentially, Straight Edge was the same message. It's my life. So don't give me a hard time for my decisions to not engage in like what everybody seems to do all the time. Now what developed out of that was a lot of confusion. Because we were these kids, we freaked people out everywhere. We just would go to shows. We weren't, like we were trying to get into these, trying to make all shows all ages. So we put the X's on our hands to say, look, if we're drinking, and you see an X on our hand, 86 is forever. But it was not like some fact.